to Scoliabus Day 2. Action! Scoliabus! Today I'm going to be taking you through some seated corrections in a similar way that we did yesterday. I'm also going to show you some little tricks that you can do as you're sitting down to help you lengthen your spine. I don't know if you're at work for a long period of time and you need a little bit of elongation. I'm also going to talk to you about a hack that I love to do when I'm traveling on a plane, for example, for a long period of time, where we can use a yoga strap to help us support our legs because we're also going to discuss crossing our legs with scoliosis whether you're sitting down or sitting on the floor we'll go over some options that we have for that but i'll show you my hack as well that's just as comfortable as crossing your legs but without the crossing which creates the twisting and the just movement that we don't really want through the pelvis and what you're going to need today is a chair preferably one with a hard bottom but it's okay if it, if it has a squidgy bit as well but if you have a hard bottom one grab that and if you have a yoga strap or even a band or any kind of strap that's going to be handy for the second half of what we're going to talk about today so go and grab those things put me on pause remember i am also running a competition to win one month free vip feel good scoliosis membership where you get access to my membership and a free call with me and you get some scoli props so you can choose between the ufo or the aliens but you'll get the band the balls and the two scoli rice bags as well in three out of the 12 videos there's going to be a secret santa word you have to know all three and you can tell me at the end of 12 days of scolimus to enter the competition so coming to our chairs i'm going to get you to actually sit at the edge of your chair so you're right at the edge, ideally no back support, but if this is a real big struggle for you, you can have some back support, but I do want us to just try and actually feel our scoliosis, feel our curves for a moment. I'm also going to get you to just take your hand underneath your bum and just move your butt cheeks out the way. So we're trying to really get as much boniness onto the chair as possible because this is going to help give us some feedback. You can let your hands just relax down onto your knees. Maybe even just close your eyes and take a moment to acknowledge how your body is feeling as it's sitting down onto the chair. Do you notice if you have one foot with maybe more weight into it compared to the other foot? Do you notice more weight in one bum cheek than the other one? Do you feel like you're leaning off to one side a little bit? Is one shoulder a little bit higher? Just acknowledge what your body does as it's relaxed in a seated position. Because we're going to try and correct that as much as possible. So, now what we're going to do, you're going to stay seated, you're going to take your ankles underneath your knees and you're gonna do your strong feet, strong ankles. So you can push through all four corners of your feet, just gentle, try and get those natural arches of your feet that we discussed yesterday. Having your ankles underneath your knees and check that your knees are in line with your hips and that we don't have one knee just kind of wandering off to the side. Then, how do your hips feel? Do you notice if you were leaning off to one side a little bit more, maybe you had more weight in one side? If you did notice that, try and equal that out a little bit so you can just do kind of like a little tilt with the hips maybe play around with that a little bit but try and get your weight equally distributed between both hips and both feet then similar to what we did yesterday we're going to take the hands to the hips and you can gently push your hands into your hips to help lengthen the spine as much as possible so helping to lengthen our curves whether we have a lumbar curve a thoracic curve a cervical curve maybe we have all three maybe we just have one any kind of curve even a fusion just trying to lengthen it out it's beneficial for all of us remember to engage your tummy muscles as well so we don't flare through the ribs reaching the crown of the head up towards the ceiling we're going to do those deep 
breaths again. So five big deep breaths. I want you to hold yourself up as long as possible. Push your hands into your hips. I'll count you through it. Let's go. Take a big inhale. Breathe into your belly, your chest. Two, three, four. Exhale. Stay long through the spine. Two, three, four. Inhale. Get long. Two, three, four. Exhale. Keep the length. Two, three, four. Inhale. Two, three, four. Exhale. Two, three, four. Inhale. Two, three, four. Exhale. Two, three, four. Let's do one more just for luck. Get really, really long. Big inhale. And big exhale. Well done, just let your body relax. That is a great way for us to lengthen our spines, to get some breath into the concavities. Again, like I mentioned yesterday, even when you're just lengthening your spine, you're gonna be opening up into your concavities more naturally and then getting those big deep breaths is just gonna help open up into those areas, which is so, so important for our scoliosis. If you're sitting down for a long period of time at work, for example, you can take your hands to your hips and do this. Do this at the desk. It's also great to help you enter a parasympathetic state, helping us to reduce anxiety and stress when we do those big, deep, slow breaths. So I really recommend incorporating that into your day somehow. What you can also do is put your hands on the desk out in front or out onto your knees and push into there. So getting some kind of, of pushing into a surface to help lengthen your spine when you need to take a little break throughout the day if you're feeling very collapsed at your desk. Anyway, before I go on to more little hacks, I want to do one more time with that breath. But we can make it a little bit more challenging this time like we did yesterday with the Schroth hands on the shoulders. So, coming into your position, Getting as much length as you can. Think arches through the feet. Lengthen through your torso. Keep your hips as equal as possible. Push your hands into your hips to help get that length. Then we can take the hands to the heads again. You can keep your hands on your hips if you prefer. If you take your hands to your head, you're going to push your hands into your head. Get that elongation. And then taking your hands to your, el your shoulders. If you're in this position, I want you to make sure your elbows are in line with your shoulders and we're not down here and we're not up here and the shoulders are down away from the ears. Think about getting your elbows away from your body. So it's helping us to open and expand, which we love. Let's do those five deep breaths one more time. Now you've got to hold your spine up yourself with your muscles. Let's go. Inhale. Two, three, four. Exhale. Two three, four. Inhale, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four. Inhale, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four. Inhale, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, Four, one more just for luck. Big inhale, breathe it in, puff it up, puff it up, puff it up. Exhale, keep the length, keep the length, keep the length. And then relax. Woo! Yeah, it is hard work. It is hard work. If you found that difficult, just trying to hold your spine up and breathe, my beautiful friend, you are not alone. It is not easy. I can feel it as well. And I do this stuff all the time. So it does get easier though, the more you practice. Let's talk about making your chair comfortable and let's talk about some travel hacks. Perhaps if you're in a car or if you're on a plane for a long period of time, I got to fly to England very soon and that is going to be a very long journey from Vancouver. So I get it. I get it. So I'm going to show you some little hacks that I do with this chair specifically and I'll show you my yoga strap hack. When I first went to see a Shroff therapist, she told me to never cross my legs. And I had to be like, girl, come on, like at some point in my life, like I'm going to cross my legs. 
sometimes things are just very unrealistic when it comes to scoliosis and I just don't think she had scoliosis and just understand what it actually is like but let me tell you you can cross your legs but there are good ways and there are bad ways some of you this might not affect at all some of you might notice this which is totally normal I noticed this as well it's how we cross our legs if we have rotation in the pelvis and if we have one hip that is higher than the other so I'm gonna go sit back into my chair and I'm gonna show you what I mean and then we'll get on to my hacks with the chair and with my yoga strap so when you're sitting down and you cross your legs crossing your legs is naturally going to make one hip higher and it's going to pull one hip further into rotation. So if you have, for example, a right hip that is higher than your left hip and your right hip is rotated forward more than your left hip, that's just an example, then if you cross your right leg over your left leg, it's actually going to make your right hip even higher and it's going to push your right hip even more into rotation into your scoliosis curve so that is where we would actually want to avoid crossing our legs like this if possible if you you know for example your right hip is higher and it rotates forward what you can do instead is cross your left leg over because then the left hip becomes higher and the left hip rotates forward and that actually helps to take you out of the the curve in your lumbar spine in your pelvis if we're cross, you might notice that this is less comfortable, which it absolutely is. And this is, I'm just totally using my scoliosis as an example here. I used to always sit like this and my right hip is higher, my right hip is rotated forward, and this is just feeding my curve. So I've had to train my body to always cross my left leg over. So I'm not feeding my curve as much. It's just not as comfortable. So if you notice that one side is really comfortable and one side is less comfortable, the comfortable side, there's just a high probability that that might actually be feeding your scoliosis. That's what your body wants to do. Your body wants to take the path of least resist resistance. Your body wants to conserve energy. And that usually means you sitting in your scoliosis curve. So just be aware of that. When I'm crossing my legs, I go this way. When I'm sitting down on the four o'clock cross legs, I always have my left leg out in front. You need to know your hip rotation and if one hip is higher than the other. Um, experiment around with that. Uh, maybe if you're, if you're speaking with a scoliosis specialist to try and understand if you do have this curvature or not. Like I said, you might not notice anything. This might not affect you in any way. So it's not for everyone, but in some cases it's for me and I've had a lot of clients as well experience the same like wow moment where it's like you, you sit one side and you can just see like you're really in your scoliosis and then you turn to the other side and you're like oh <laughs> i like i'm sitting up a lot straighter than i was on the other side so just be aware of that before we get to the yoga strap i'm going to show you what i do with this chair so when you're sitting down for a long period of time it is important that you have proper back support this chair is a really bad example of what someone with scoliosis should have so i actually adapt it by putting my blanket over, over like this. So when I'm sitting back, it just gives me a lot more support so I'm not rounding into it, into the chair like this. I actually use this chair for work. I also take a scoli prop because I have a lot of rotation in my thoracic spine to where my rib cage is. I take a scoli prop and I put it, that's the convexity, convexity of my thoracic curve. I put the scoli prop there so that when I sit back into the chair, it the prop is pushing that convexity forward. So in a way, it's helping derotate the thoracic spine. And that's very specific to my curve type. It really depends where your convexities and concavities are. But if you do notice that you have quite a convexity on one side of your ribs like I do, you might enjoy this little hack because it just helps derotate as well. I will do this on the plane. I look like a crazy person, but not as crazy as I'm about to show you. So this is what my setup would be for my back. I don't prop underneath my hips. Some of you might notice, again, that you have one hip higher than the other. I don't love that because if you prop underneath your hip, it affects, it might help what's going on with the hips, 
but it's going to affect what's going on in that upper curve as well. So you just want to be aware of that if you're propping underneath your hip that you're not like pushing yourself more into a thoracic curve. So please be aware of that because that's important. Personally, I don't prop underneath my hips because I have quite a big thoracic curve and when I when I correct my lumbar with a prop, it pushes me well off to the right. So be aware of that. So I prop this convexity and the yoga strap hack. So this is great for sitting on a plane because when you're on a plane, all you want to do is cross your legs or like sit in some really weird, uncomfortable positions. What you can do is take a yoga strap or a band or a pair of leggings or just anything that you can tie around your legs and you can fasten the yoga strap up but mine is in, in such a knot right now that I'm not even going to try and attempt to do that. I'm just going to tie a knot like this around the top of the knees and what this does I just feel so much better when you're sat in this position it just take it gives you stability it takes away the desire to want to cross your legs or sit in an uncomfortable or weird position that maybe with scoliosis we shouldn't be in you if you're on a plane or in a car or something you can put a blanket over your legs just so you don't look like a complete crazy person but honestly you just got to do what is best for you and your spine but I will sit on the plane like this with my legs like this I don't know, doing some work, watching a film. At some point, this is coming off and I'm probably going to end up in some really awkward position, but at least I'm giving myself the best chance. So this is going to be my little scoliosis hack of the day. I hope that that helps in some kind of way for those of you who might be getting on a plane or something soon or in the future. I really hope that you enjoyed Scoliosis Day 2. Well, well done, especially if you have watched this far. I really appreciate you. Please remember to like and subscribe. I hope that I will see you tomorrow for Scoliosis Day 3.